Hello everyone and welcome to episode 71 of Sold with Updike Pew. I'm Jeff Updike. And I'm Weston Pew and we are so excited everyone's tuning in today. Hope you're enjoying your lunch while you mm -hmm. give us a listen and somewhere where it's hopefully warm. Yeah, it's, it's cold here today. 39 and supposedly wintery mix. I think that um, some of uh, the, I know Weatherford's already getting some of it, but mm -hmm. it's a little more extreme. So yeah. it'll be interesting to see how far it comes into Dallas. Yeah, I think we're kind of right on that line. We're always right on that line. You know, it's interesting that... Like, you can get blown off the map, yeah, or you're you like, know, Sunnyvale doesn't get anything, and Denton gets you know five inches of of, of uh, snow. So it's interesting. And speaking of weather, we actually were in um, on tour yesterday, and we were on uh, Glendora, and got to see firsthand what some of those houses look mm -hmm. like that went through um, the tornadoes earlier this yeah, year. Yeah, it, it, it the the house that we went to tour uh, that was uh, Karen Fry's listing was one of the one of the few on that on the street yep. that was untouched but it was i mean every other one still had tarping on it still had windows blown out it was kind of a interesting we're i mean we're we're what two three months down the road from that now yeah i think the biggest thing for me was the missing trees yeah because yeah. it looks like a, it looks like a brand new neighborhood that you'd find in a suburban market where yeah. there's nothing left yeah there's a uh you know we'll I, i'll do a little more research on it but there's this uh uh, there's a the city of Dallas and a couple of other organizations are getting together and they're going to plant 3,500 trees across that that yeah. section, not just that area, but across different sections of Dallas to help um, kind of reestablish the 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 tree growth. And they can't replace the ones that you know they can't replace them with the size that was taken down, but it's to help manage you know the next 20 years worth of oxygen and yeah you know. it'll be much better than just the one inch that they stick in the ground oh yeah totally so. totally so um it's been an interesting week with all the touring and yeah we've got some new listings that we just brought in this week Five Thousand cedar springs is a brand new one that mm -hmm. we just brought on and it's had great showing mm -hmm. um I, this one is a two bedroom one bath the bathroom is a jack and jill scenario mm -hmm. it has a little patio assigned parking mm -hmm. it's a great and it's really in the, a, a really desirable portion of Cedar Springs right there where it's yeah. easy to get to just about anything. Yeah, we're going to talk about it. We didn't have photography ready or any of that yet for the show this week, but we'll, we'll talk about it next week. It's a great deal. Priced at right. $165,000. Uh -huh. Great starter condo. Um, you know, I, I think, you know, with uh, FHA made a change to their rules where they can do spot approval now again. Yeah. And so, you know, somebody could probably get into that with 3.5% down. And, you know, we always talk about what's happening in the neighborhood, and that is one of those neighborhoods where we've seen gentrification began, um, beginning to take hold again. Yeah, where very much so. bulldozing some of the houses um, and bringing back. And this is uh, definitely falls into what Dallas needs more of, which is affordable housing. Yeah. And we've got a really cool house in Merriman Park that's going to be coming on. Is it Merriman Park? Or yep. Is, okay, yep. There's two neighborhoods right there next door to each other, and I, I get I get them flipped sometimes. So yeah, we've got our fingers crossed on this one. This one's a really interesting <coughs> one because we're actually helping them buy something right now, mm -hmm. and um, looks like things are coming together. And it was really interesting this week is because um, we work with Jeremy Radcliffe of um, SB SWBC, and he's been on here before. And it was so interesting is that he actually was called by the listing agent when we submitted the offer. And because that listing agent knew Jeremy mm -hmm. and had done a deal with Jeremy and was impressed with how he worked, it really did give that listing agent a information to the relocation company and to the seller that mm -hmm. I think is really working in our direction. And so we were really, really excited when that we heard that. Yeah. Yeah, it really does make a difference, and um, when you have a team of people like Jeremy and and uh, Grant Myers that does a lot of our closings, and Heath that does a lot of our closings, and yeah. you know, it's just when you've got that team of people that have reputations across the real estate Correct. industry, it really does uh, help 
kind of put your deals together sometimes. So, yep. and we, you know, we're still out looking for houses, houses, for, houses, houses, houses. Yeah, we've got um, uh, a family that we're working with. This is, I think, our sixth time to work with them, and they're wanting to yep. buy something in Phillips Creek Ranch. That's that really big master plan community. And we talked about uh, a house. We actually showed them last week on the show right you know, I've, I've had shown that to them uh -huh. as a possibility and it just didn't work for them but you know they're looking for something that's five bedrooms uh plus a study and uh, they'd really like to have something that has a pool and you know they'll pay upwards of nine hundred thousand for something if we can and just I, find the right one and i thought it was interesting so when you and i were circling back on monday after you'd taken them out they had asked um because they still weren't finding what they were looking at and they mm -hmm. asked you about past houses that you have shown them and you're you were like oh well let me look them up and you pulled it up on our app and punch it in and it comes back and all of the ones that they were like okay that could be a contender it could mm -hmm. be a contender mm -hmm. had all gone under contract and it and we're talking about a two or a three week period and so it's really interesting that you know certain areas can be extremely hot certain price points can be very hot and mm -hmm. it's interesting that that price point in phillips creek ranch and surrounding areas is very hot right now yeah it really is and um the uh the, we went out, we went, on Sunday, I went with them to go visit a builder out there. And this was the funniest thing. So, <laughs> you know, we always warn people that builder salespeople, the, one of their primary goals when somebody walks in the door is to keep you there as long as they can All day. because they don't want you to go to another builder. They mm -hmm. want you to explore every possible opportunity. And so I had warned these uh, people that that was going to be the case and to figure out quickly if they had the product they wanted. <clears throat> and if not, then, you know, move on down to the next builder. And uh, she uh, had walked into this specific builder's office and the woman, I mean, the woman came at her with the, the clipboard and, you know, a thousand questions and it just, it threw her off. Yeah. And she, I mean, it, it turned her off to the point she turned and walked out the door. And then she called us and said, would you go back to this builder with me? Because I really want you to you know, interact with her, uh, you know, because she was just so aggressive as a salesperson. And there are times like when you and I go with clients to see new home construction, one of the things that we know that we do and we kind of prep everyone is that we're going to run offense mm -hmm. and give you time to actually be in the house and in experience the house because mm -hmm. sometimes you just want to sit in the furniture and see how it feels mm -hmm. spatially and so our job is to basically get that sales counselor and move them out of the way mm -hmm. and let you have that time that you need yeah and it does not cost you a penny more to work with us when you work with builder because right. builders have a real estate commission built in they are not going to waive it just because you don't have a, a realtor involved because if what happens is you know when times are really good Builders don't need realtors as much, but mm -hmm. when times are not good, builders need realtors a lot. And so the smart ones don't burn that bridge right. um, where they, you know, they develop the reputation that, that, that they're going to discount it with, if the realtor's not there, they don't want that reputation. Right. They, they would rather know that you're going to bring people back over and over. I'm trying to think of the name of the company that was a, a really large company that had the reputation that they did not want to work with realtors. And, it's probably better that you can't and, remember that so that you don't say it on well, the show. They're, ba they're, they're bankrupt now. <laughs> okay, well, then there's that. <laughs> was, uh, but uh, anyway, I'm, I digress. But it was, was you it know, it, it was... Uh, F and G? No, 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 no. Okay. I can't, um, I, anyway, it doesn't, doesn't really matter. But it, the, the, the point of that is, even if you are wanting to build a new product, please call us and let us help you because there are a lot of things about the, the process of building a home that Weston really knows because he was one of those evil salespeople at one time. <laughs> so, yes, I wasn't evil, but I did do it in San Antonio for five years. And yeah. it was interesting because I was a guy who floated and went from the starter homes of a hundred mm -hmm. and went all the way up to, you know, right around 700,000. It was really interesting to learn the different dy uh, dynamics of that. Yeah. So um, yes, if you're going out, we'd love to go out there and help yeah. you walk you through it. So. Well, and, and you know, I mean, a, and a builder, I mean, one other example of this is a builder is not going to tell you to get a home inspection. No. And I think that, so I worked for the company and they automatically had the homes inspected and mm -hmm. I've never seen that done before, but I was shocked at some of the really good builders that we were um, in contracts with over the years mm -hmm. that when we did home inspections, what we were noticing is there were large gaps in what had happened to the point where there were secondary drain lines for HVAC units on the second mm -hmm. floor that 
actually terminated behind the walls. Yeah, they just, they just emptied into the wall cavity. Into the wall cavity. Mm -hmm. And because they are using, you know, whether it's blown insulation or phone insulation, those absorb so much moisture that it's months and sometimes years before there's enough of that condensation that builds up mm -hmm. that A, either you get a mold or it collapses mm -hmm. the wall. I've seen both happen. So I was really surprised and it doesn't, the clients that listen to us and mark their calendar mm -hmm. to have the home re-inspected mm -hmm. at month 10 that they've been in it so that they can go back because they've got that one year warranty. They're the happiest clients. They're the ones that are always using us. Mm -hmm. So we've got a lot of tips on that. Yeah. I know those are just, yeah. let us know. We're happy to help you out. Yeah. And, um, you know, I, I, I want to say thank you very much to Chris Kelly for coming on yeah. the show last week. Um, we Thursday night of last week uh, was the 75th anniversary party f celebration of our company that I think it was called the Diamond Jubilee, which is, I think, what the 75th Fitting. is. Um, but our company put on a huge party at the Irving Convention Center. They invited everybody from the company, spouses, everybody. Yeah. And it was such a blast. We had, they had Emerald City perform. And if you haven't seen Emerald City perform, they're a really great band. They're a great local cover band right. that is, you know, just does a really fantastic job. And they had that crowd hopping. And it was so funny because I thought it was just going to be like, you come in, they do the awards, announce, not awards, but announce um, new information, give a toast. <clears> the <throat> But then right afterwards, the band started up and I was like, who is this? I've never seen this before. Mm -hmm. And everybody kind of looked at me like I sprouted up her <laughs> head. I was like, okay. And um, they were really great and they had 14 members on yeah. stage and literally everybody was out there dancing. I was like, okay, so this is what we're doing. All right, mm -hmm. let's go. So yep. good times. It was. So thank you, Chris. Thank you to the whole management team for putting that on. It was really a great time. Um, one last thing I want to talk about in our few opening <laughs> moments here that we've really, we have of, really ooh, sorry, stretched this out. is it's Girl Scout season, Girl Scout cookie season. So I have uh, great nieces that have already begged me to order. I've, these are, I think half of the, oh, I'm, yeah, this, this is only half of what I ordered because the others are already gone. I was going to say. <laughs> so. But I think I want to hold up the Thin Mints because Jeff has ordered the special Thin Mints that are super thin. Be, yeah, they're so thin you can't even see them. <laughs> Does that mean that the calories are gone too? Yeah, right. <laughs> anyway, anyway uh, just drop a note in the comments if you would like to have any of these Girl Scout cookies and the first three people that drop comments in there, get them. So. Awesome. Ceci will be watching for that and just let us know. If somebody jumps in, let us know, okay? Beat me. Yep. Just kidding. So let's jump into our properties. So the we're going to stay in East Dallas and each week we're trying to get where we actually theme the homes that we can when mm -hmm. it works out that way. And this week we were able to find great homes in East Dallas that kind of had porches and we wanted to highlight them um, just because as we're moving into spring, these are houses that we thought would be a great um great fit. Mm -hmm. So without any further ado, we're going to start off at 5238 Ridgedale Avenue. And this is um, a portion of uh, Dallas that has always been extremely sought after. Mm -hmm. um, it sits adjacent to the M streets, about as close to it as you can get without being in the yep. M streets. It is uh, in the Greenland Hills subdivision that is uh, directly below the M streets. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Greenland Hills uh, was a development that was, gosh, I think it was developed back in the the 40s, if I'm not mistaken, um, and uh, it's it's got a really interesting past. It and Vickery, Vickery Place that kind of butt up to one another. Great access to 75. You have great access to shopping. Uh, the Knox Henderson area, especially on the eastern side of Central mm -hmm. Expressway, has undergone so much transition with you know really great uh, uh, little nightclubs and places to have dinner and, uh, you know, Hungry Belly is one My of favorite. our favorite places to go eat lunch right now. So uh, from a location perspective, you just can't be beat. So if you're commuting, this is a great one because you can get up north if you need to use in 75. But then the other thing is you've got great access mm -hmm. to some of those converter streets that are run east and west. And again, coming into downtown, uptown, this is an easy, this is one of those stepping stones we always see that um, Jeff and I don't specialize in specific areas. Mm -hmm. We actually really go for clients the entire lifespan. Mm -hmm. And so we can see so many of our clients that will start out in uptown. And this is usually their first stair step in. Mm -hmm. A little diverse, but this is definitely one of the ones that they consider. Yeah, and this is a really great home. Uh, great big front porch on it. 
uh, really nice walk up brick construction. Uh, the uh, uh, the the door is uh, is kind of offset on this one. It's a, it's an interesting walk up to it, I think, mm -hmm. with the way that they've used the the gravel. If you are looking to renovate a home or want ideas for um, your own house, this is a really great house to look at because they've done so much. The wood floors are the original. Um, I believe they've also, the stain is not too deep. It has a little tone of gray. And then they've come, come back with a nice white, almost alabaster. Mm -hmm. um, and they've put the pocket lights in the ceiling in the right locations versus just tons and tons of them. And this is the that very uh, in demand plan where you've got the open kitchen with the bar seating. So you've got the casual place to eat, but then you have plenty of room for a full dining table. Mm -hmm. um, talk about these appliances because you, you. So I am in love with these because this is black stainless steel and it's a really good go between. Um, here we're going to move right into the uh, master. And the master is great because it does open up to the backyard. And more and more people really enjoy that. They've also done a really good job with this one. This probably was a three bedroom at one time, and now it's a two. And because they've done that, they've been able to give themselves really quality bathroom and closet space. And in here, again, if you're looking to do a renovation, look no further than the vanity mirror light combination. This is the second bedroom that they have set up as an office and also on the back of the house. Uh, great closet there. This is the hall bath that is right across from that, mm -hmm. uh, the second bedroom. So you can see the house is virtually the entire house has been redone. And so it, items that have been addressed in this would be the low E windows, lighting, attic insulation, electrical plumbing, gas line, tankless hot water heater, HVAC. And the work was done by Ornata Residential. And they also use J and L designs to get involved with this. And you can tell from the day that, from the minute that we opened the front door that this was complete. Yep. So 5238 Ridgedale Avenue, two bedroom, two bath, a little under 1700 square feet, priced at 529 and that brings it in about $318 a square foot. And we want to say thank you so much to Betty Crawford and Sally Nobleman for allowing us to highlight your home. It is a charmer. It is. Thank you very much. And now we're going to move over to Willis. Yeah. And Willis is... What you talking about, Willis? <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So 5450 Willis Avenue. Um, Tell us a little about this area, Jeff. Well, it's about three blocks south of the last one. <laughs> <laughs> so, great area. Again, we don't have to dig too much into it. If you want to know what about this area, go back about 45 seconds and we'll start listening <laughs> right. to that. Um, so, great access to Highway 75, uh, great, great shopping, Hungry uh, Belly. <laughs> So this home is actually also renovated, but this one was built in 1923, and this one has more of a bungalow style, and you can see they've gone as far as to get the numbering right, and that is shaker style uh, numbers as well. The porch is really great. Can't quite see it in this one, but they do have a swing on that and add, and also a ceiling fan on this one. Yeah, it's a, a it is definitely a front porch neighborhood. Again, this one, uh, just like the last one, you open up the door, you've got that great open space. Uh, living room is very, very open, lots of flexibility in how you might want to arrange it. Uh, you actually have uh, two uh, kind of a, a big open living area, and then that opens to the kitchen, which again is that very popular design of having that wall taken out, mm -hmm. bar coming out, a little bit of bar seating there, and then you still have plenty of room for your formal dining room. And they use the front room on this property as the study. And one of the things that they've done really great is out that door right there is a small little enclosed area. And that's where they put the grill, but it also is great for seating. Again, they've replaced the windows. They've gone through and added plantation shutters throughout. Mm -hmm. Nice high ceilings. It has the finish out that people are looking for these days. And it's not one of those houses that we look at and it's gray on gray on gray on gray. Mm -hmm. And it just wears you out. They've done a really good job. And this is the master by adding in this unique closet space. So it's almost like a two person closet system. Mm -hmm. One for you, one for me, however that goes. And then they've done a great job in the, in the bathroom. Okay, a sculptured tub, a big walk-in shower. Uh, guest room is really super light and bright. Again, they've got the plantation shutters in here. Great, uh, it's a, a wonderful oversized room. And then the third bedroom, uh, as you can see here, is the room they use for their nursery. 
So this home is a three bedroom and the third bedroom is also a good size. Here they're using it as an office. And this is the one that's at the front of the house. Yeah, that, that, it could actually be a four bedroom right. if you really needed it to. And then this is the backyard and they've redone the fence, which is board on board, detached two car garage. Mm -hmm. And that little uh, sculpture right there that is the ski lift, that is excluded from mm -hmm. this. And as I mentioned, when we were talking about the kitchen, here is the little outdoor area. Great space. This is a unique feature of the home. Yep. Great home, 5450 Willis Avenue, three bedrooms, two bathrooms, a little under 2,200 square feet, priced at 649, which brings it in at 297 a square foot. And for homes that are in that, uh, that, that segment of the city, I think we're seeing average sales prices be about that $300 a yep. square foot range. So and for, for these to be, I'm sorry. Nope, go ahead. These to be so, so well done, at that price point makes them a really great value. Yep, I don't see these lasting very long on the market, but we also want to say really quickly, mm -hmm. thank you to Jackie Collins for allowing us to highlight your home. Absolutely, thank you, Jackie. Very good, my phone's going off and it's a telemarketer, so we're going to All right, so we're going to move over to Little Forest Hills. Love me some Little Forest Hills. Mm -hmm. So this is 8914 Santa Clara Drive. And if you haven't been in Little Forest Hills, <coughs> it's, it's a charming neighborhood. And the funniest thing about Little Forest Hills is once people move into Little Forest Hills, they rarely leave yeah. because it is it is a neighborhood. It is they click over there. Yes, they do. You, it is a it is a neighborhood that has a personality mm -hmm. all its own. And I think you know we talked about this one time before when we were talking about uh, another house in Little Forest Hills, but this neighborhood was built as the fishing cabins uh -huh. for all of the people that wanted to fish at White Rock Lake. Which is so funny because I don't think you can fish there anymore. Can you? Well, I do. Yeah, you can. Can you eat them? Well, I don't know. Oh. <laughs> Would so, I? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> so the great thing about Little Forest Hills is you also have access to 30. Mm -hmm. So if you're not going to take Buckner or Garland in and out of this area, you can jump on 30, and that makes it really great. You'll see more and more of the grocery stores are beginning to backfill into this. Some of that area, um, there's a section on the lower portion of the lake that has come in with a Tom Thumb. There's a mm -hmm. new growler. Um Canes, chicken is over there now. Mm -hmm. yeah, so there's some really great things that um, are just starting to show up in Casa Linda too. Mm -hmm. They really are doing a great job. Yeah, and this is, you know, White Rock Lake is really kind of one of the gems of Dallas. And yeah. to live anywhere within, you know, walking, biking. That is walking distance. Is just really, it's a great value. It is the draw. And so this house is a really interesting one because of the way that it sits on the lot and because of who actually designed it. So this home was actually designed by um, a man that enjoyed lodges and was from up north. And you can see it reflected in the way that this house is set up. Yeah. Uh, Daniel Green Greenberg is the listing agent on this, met us here and walked us through it. And this is, uh, you feel, I can't, I, I don't think that I've been in another home in Dallas that has this feel. So it's really, and it's true because these pictures are amazing, but I don't think that it's possible to capture what it's like to be in this and the way that the light comes in because they've taken the windows up so high, they vaulted it. And then architecturally speaking, you rarely find um, structures mm -hmm. that are intact like this mm -hmm. and the other thing too is when they do it sometimes it just looks cheap mm -hmm. and these are actual true pieces of wood and it just holds that room together so well foam insulation mm -hmm. throughout um it is a super super energy efficient home uh the uh, very popular open floor plan that we always talk about or i always talk about mm -hmm. um <laughs> where you've got a little bit of bar seating you still got plenty of room for a nice big formal dining room table and it doesn't crowd the rest of your living space um, the, the, uh, this home has three bedrooms Correct. that are really, really well sized. This is one of the bedrooms that they use as a, a living area, office area, and, uh, that opens out to the backyard and it, you know, it, it's not your normal square room. So you've got a little bit of a, of a character to it. And one of the great things about the way they've situated all three of the bedrooms is that they all open up to the backyard. And the master here, what they've done is they've echoed the way the living room had the wood in the ceiling, brought it back in, vaulted the ceilings. So you have this vertical and horizontal space that really feels warm and inviting. Mm -hmm. And the bathroom just blew me away. A double vanity, granite countertop, I'm sorry, uh, uh, quartz countertops, big separate walk-in shower, sculpted tub. Um, they did something, this is the hall bath and laundry room, they did something very interesting mm -hmm. with in that they uh, 
created, this was originally supposed to be like one big room, but they uh, uh, built a wall that separates the bathroom from the laundry area, and it just works really well. And if you're asking why we showed that picture of the garage, is because that actual garage sits behind the carport of this, and it's a really great configuration. Yeah, it really is. So you have uh, three bedrooms, two bath, two car garage, plus covered parking space, about 2,400 square feet. Uh, it's a 2018 build, but like Dana said, it's it's almost better than new because yeah. your window shades are there. The you know any of the issues that uh, that do come new up in new builds have have already been taken care of, and it is move in ready. Yep. And so we want to say thank you so much to Dana Greenberg and Tracy Hummel for allowing us to highlight their home. They're both amazing. Yep. The great thing about this home is this home will also be open on Sunday, and I believe it's from 2 to 4. Just double-check that by going to our website, looking on Homes on their open house, and I'll be able to tell you though which one this one is yep. and any of the others that you're interested in. So thanks for hanging with us a little longer today, and we'll be right back. There are lots of ways to keep up with us. Visit and like our Facebook page to watch us live and get updates about future show topics. Also, visit our Instagram account where you can see the latest homes we have for sale. You can also check out our website at updikepew.com where you can create customized searches of active and sold homes that you may find of interest. If you'd like to know how much your home is worth, visit homeprice.fyi and you can get a price instantly. Just enter your address and a couple of other pieces of information and we will email you a price. If you are on the go and podcasts are better for you, our second segments are available on iTunes and Spotify. Last of all, you can reach out to us by phone or text at 214-377-2223. And welcome back to our second segment today. Uh, you know, being the first part of the year, we thought it would be good to kind of wrap up 2019 and give you a market update and kind of talk about what happened last year in the market. I think that it's important for us to take a look at this. I know that whenever we're out and about, people are always asking, what's the market doing? Um, and one of the key indicators is to kind of know where we have been. Mm -hmm. um, and that kind of helps us do a little bit of forecasting. And so we're going to take and look at some of the primary neighborhoods that we highlight quite often mm -hmm. on the show and go over um, them and give you some information. We can drill it down a lot further than it currently has, um, but this is a really good start and it's interesting information we thought for sure. Yeah, it's a, um, you know one of the things that, that we kind of found going through this is we're, Texas is a non-disclosure state, meaning that the sales prices are not automatically recorded in the public record anywhere. And so sales prices go into the MLS, but you know, many times what we can, what we find is, you know, garbage in, garbage out, because we're going to see a couple of anomalies in these, in the Super data. Super anomalies. Yeah. And, and so when, um, unfortunately, when the, the big reports come out and uh, the people that write articles that rely on them, if they don't look at the data deeper and, and figure out what these anomalies are and right. pull them out, it, the whole thing gets a little skewed. So. Super skewed. And then you're like, oh, look what's happening. Yeah. No, that's not a trend. That's an anomaly. Yeah, right. Um, so if we jump into our first slide, I'm, I'm going to run through this really quickly. This is the average sales prices in 2019. So to kind of to, to tell you how the slide is made up, it's a double axis uh, presentation. On the right, uh, excuse me, on the left hand axis is the sales prices. And that's going to show, and then I've broken them down into... Uh, uh, the entire MLS and then six other sub neighborhoods that we tend to focus on. And that, that's what the blue bars represent. The orange line is going to show you the variation from 2018. And if that is on the right hand axis, and if you'll see that um, that right hand axis does not start at zero at the bottom because right. we wanted to be able to show you the neighborhoods that had gone down, but without having to go off of the chart. And so in the far left hand side, we're going to talk about the entire MLS and in the entire MLS, the average sales price for Metrotex was 327,000, almost 328. And that was an increase of almost 6% over mm -hmm. last year, which yes. is a good jump. Yeah. And this, when we talk about the entire MLS, um, we are talking about a very, very large area. I mean, we cover yeah. 22 counties. We go from Abilene uh, all the way. I think. I didn't get that. Could you try again? Excuse me. Um, Just series on. <laughs> did I say that? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, it goes all the way from Abilene to uh, 
uh, almost all the way to, to actually to Tyler. Uh -huh. Tyler has their own MLS, but there are a lot of Tyler members that belong to ours as well. And then it goes all the way from the, the uh, Oklahoma border uh, almost into Waco. So it's a huge area. So um, this this entire MLS number takes in a big variety of uh, single family homes, condos, ranches, land, uh, all of that. And we saw that in North Dallas, they had probably the largest um, price Per the average price at mm -hmm. 1.25 million, mm -hmm. um, and that was a little bit down. And that's an interesting that that is down 26 percent. Yeah, this this is one of the anomalies that we found, uh, and the the numbers here are skewed not by not by an accident, but by a, an a, a landmark sale. The the old uh, Tom Hicks estate mm -hmm. that is right off of Walnut Hill and the Tollway. Uh, sold in 2018, and it was a one of the largest sales ever in MLS, closing at 39 million dollars. And boom! And boom! That throws that whole everything else off in that uh, in terms of uh, what the average sales you know how the average sales price compares. This is truly the average sales price for 2019. Right. But seeing the, that variation, the variation was not that much. It was just the number skewed by that one sale. So, And I think the takeaway from that is that this is why you really have to drill down into neighborhoods mm -hmm. and not just fly and take that into consideration when you're looking at this and saying, oh, well, that's a blanket statement that mm -hmm. I can just apply to this. And that mm -hmm. is what's going to be on my house. Because mm -hmm. that's really not. Yeah, it's not. It, you're right. And it's a... It, it is the reason that, that when you're, if you're really just wanting to know what's going on in the marketplace, right. these are fine to look at and they, they give you what you, what you want to know. But if you are, are, are genuinely interested in knowing what your house is worth, then that's when you make a call to us. Even if, even if you're not planning to sell, I mean, five, 10 years down right. the road, but you really want to know what the value is, call us. Yeah. We'll, we'll do the research for you. Yep. And one of the other things too, that on that uh, chart that uh, Ziggy had up earlier was the Oak Lawn numbers. And the mm -hmm. Oak Lawn seemed really out of whack when we were looking at that. And uh, you discovered really interesting um, information about that. Yeah, this was the the, the, the garbage in, garbage out Super example, garbage. where uh, there was a piece of land listed over on Riverfront for uh, right at $2 million that sold. And when the broker put the sold in, they listed the sold price as $175 million. I think what they meant to do was put it in as a million seven fifty, because it was listed at one point nine nine nine, but it, they listed it as a sold at one hundred and seventy five million dollar sale. So their their records, when you pull that agent's records up in MLS, man, they had a banner year last year. <laughs> so. <laughs> but it but it does skew these numbers quite a bit. Um, I did want to just hit real quickly back on the chart. So the Lakewood average sales price last year was 421000 which is about 2.2% higher than the year before. Uh, North Oak Cliff, which we have seen a tremendous mm -hmm. amount of, of uh, change happening in, uh, average sales price is 292000 and that is up almost 18% from the year before, and it is uh, predominantly because of all that new construction yep. that's coming in down there that is at a, a much higher price point than what things have been at before. Uh, Northwest Dallas, which is uh, Marsh Walnut Hillish area, average sales price over there is 499. That was up about 17%. And again, that is because of all that new construction that's going on over in that neighborhood. Uh, and then last of all, Northeast Dallas, uh, which is Really, Lake Highlands is a better way for me to say that. Uh, their average sales price was 416000 with about a 2.8% uh, price improvement over there. So it's interesting to see where you have neighborhoods where there's a lot of new construction coming in. You can really see how that can like surge up pricing, mm -hmm. but it's not really a fair representation of what a house is if it's not new. And so again... Yeah. There's so many factors that come into play when it comes out to truly pricing out a home, mm -hmm. corner lots, busy highways, green belts. What what are these elements that create that true picture and, mm -hmm. and, and market value of your home? Yep. Um, jumping on to the next slide, it's uh, average days on market for these same neighborhoods that we were talking about. Um, average days on market in the, uh, mm -hmm. uh, in the entire MLS is 59 days. Uh, North Dallas, it's 96 days. Lakewood, 55 days. You can see it's all very, very close together. 
uh, that North Dallas number, I think, got skewed by that one really big sale that was that did take forever because mm -hmm. I think that home had been on the market for three or four years. So. But but see, okay, so for me, when I see days on the market and mm -hmm. I'm seeing, you know, and I know that, you know, sellers are like, oh, I shouldn't be selling more because they're remembering how things were. Mm -hmm. But when we're seeing like 40 to 60 days, that is a normal buying cycle. Mm -hmm. That's when everybody can look at it and you're getting a really healthy market value. It's not a, I've got to have it race because there's somebody else behind me mm -hmm. inflating it. We're seeing just a normalcy of the mm -hmm. days on market. Yeah, yeah definitely. Um, and so the, the rest of that data all kind of just kind of lays the same on uh, on days on market. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we're we're looking at about an average days on market of sixty days right now. I'm fine across with that. the board. Yeah, me too. That's, <laughs> that's a, a good good that pace market. we can that pace buyers and sellers don't feel burned out. Yep. So if we jump to the last slide, uh, this is the number of closed sales in 2019. And I could not put the entire MLS onto this because uh -huh. it would have thrown this chart way off. But the number of, in, of listings, uh, number of closings in 2019 for the entire MLS is 116,136. That is a ton. But then the other interesting statistic that you have that you didn't put on here is that the number of listings that came on in that mm -hmm, year mm -hmm. was 158. So there's a delta of about 40,000. Mm -hmm. And that seems odd, mm -hmm. doesn't it? I mean, there's 40,000 homes that didn't have to go through. That, well, a lot of times what happens is this, this new listing number contains every new listing that came on the market. Mm -hmm. sometimes, it, it, sometimes people change and sometimes they don't want to sell their home or they decide they're not going to move up or they um what is also not included in that is a home may have come on the market with one broker one price expired come back on the market with a different broker therefore that's going to be counted two times or three or three or four <laughs> yeah yep so um anyway if we uh if we go back to that last slide uh we'll just go through those neighborhoods real quickly like in the the north dallas market uh there were 981 closed sales and um, that was up about 2.28%. In the Lakewood market, we had 3,117 homes that sold. That was up about 3% in the number of sales. Uh, North Oak Cliff, here's what we were talking about a while ago, where the number of sales, there were 1,788 sales in North Oak Cliff last year. That's a lot. It is. And they were, that was almost 10% more than there were the year before. So many more condos are packing them in. in yes, the they are. Areas. Yep. Uh, Oak Lawn, there were 658 sales. That was down a, a little, about 3.82%. Um, uh, uh, I'm sorry, I got off the line. Uh, Oak Lawn was 1,171 sales. That was down about 2.1%. And then Northeast Dallas, which is the Lake Highland, or I'm sorry, the uh, uh, You're right. yeah Lake Highlands market, there were about a thousand sales, which was down about three percent from the year before. One of the things that I think is interesting is that there were thirty-one seventeen sales in Lakewood, mm -hmm. but there were forty-five hundred new listings, mm -hmm. and that's a that's a fourteen hundred difference. Mm -hmm. So our our homes being overpriced mm -hmm. and have to be relisted and brought into reality because it's that's a that's the biggest mm -hmm. jump that we have on any of that right yeah. there. And, and that is really, I, I think, what we're seeing as the normalization of the market occurs. You've said this time and time again that the greed has gone out of the market. Yep. Sellers can't price their homes as aggressively as they were because the, the number of buyers in the marketplace, we're seeing a decline in, the, in some of the numbers, in some of the areas in the number of sales. Right. And the, uh, buyers aren't willing to, they're, they're not, they're, they're just not being as aggressive or feeling as pressured uh, as they were a couple of years ago. Yeah, we're not coming out of 2010 and 2011 when people were so glad that the economy was coming back and they had been waiting to buy a house when the market was right and jobs were coming up again. Mm -hmm. And we're not in that. We've been in this healthy, robust. And so people that were starving for homes, they're, they've already bought. Yeah. So. Yep. Lots of good information. Yep. And if you want any of this information on your specific neighborhood, on your specific house, please don't hesitate to call us. We're happy to uh, we're happy to put it together for you, and uh, you know, in, in as broad or as in much detail as you would like. Yep. 
Well, don't forget to grab the Girl Scout cookies while you can, or I'm going to have to eat them all, and that would be a bad thing. <laughs> that would be a bad thing. So thank you for joining us today. We really appreciate your time. And remember, we want to be your realtors for life. Thank you.